Most video games have us playing the role of the good guy and vanquishing our foes in the name of all that is just. However, some series do find ways to shake it up and let us see things from another point of view. After all, as the saying goes, sometimes it's good to be bad. Some video games are specifically designed to let you get malicious and cause as much destruction as possible, and many more include a morality system where becoming a baddie is a viable option. We'll be avoiding those sorts of titles in this video and instead looking at typically longer running series that have introduced iconic villains who became playable somewhere later down the line. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games where you play as the villain. Number 10, Big Daddy, Bioshock 2. As beloved and celebrated as Bioshock's story of Jack is, the true stars of the piece are the encounters with the wandering Big Daddies. The great visual design and absolute panic induced by the Big Daddy made it one of the standouts for the original Bioshock, so much so that it graced the game's cover with its presence. Whilst the original Bioshock has the protagonist putting together their own Big Daddy suit in the final chapters, the sequel goes a step further when it puts us permanently in the role of one of the undersea powerhouses. Bioshock 2 stars Delta, a Big Daddy who must reconnect with his little sister Eleanor lest he ceasing function completely. Whilst the core gameplay is largely the same, if not very much tweaked, what separates it from the original game is taking everything great about the Big Daddy and putting it at the player's disposal. Yes, you can now wield the giant drills and overpowered shotguns that cause your downfall in the first game. It might not be a specific villain, but playing a whole game as a Big Daddy was a cool direction for the series to take and helped Bioshock 2 to stand alone from its predecessor's story of human betrayal. Number 9. Wario. Wario Land. There aren't many video game bad guys that are so popular that they get their own games. Wario is even more unique in that his playable appearances have spun off into multiple different directions, from platformers to the downright insane micro-game madhouse that is the WarioWare franchise. Mario's recolored rival first appeared in the Game Boy title Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, acting as a greedy and malicious counterpart to the benevolent do-gooder. Despite being apparently designed out of frustration by Nintendo R&D 1, who didn't want to work on a game with a character they didn't create, he was enough of a success that the next Mario Land game saw him take centre stage. Going from antagonist to protagonist with the incredible turnaround time of 18 months, Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 surprised fans by putting Mario's newest villain at the forefront. Fighting to make as much money as he could by plundering the coffers of the Syrup Pirates, the game introduced many of Wario's key traits, such as his shoulder barge and comedic villainy. Wario Land was such a success that it spawned several follow-ups on Nintendo handheld consoles across the years, as well as his own 3D platformer, Wario World, and he remains a key part of the Mario IP to this day. Number 8, Hi Hachi, Tekken 2. Whilst most people don't play fighting games for the story, if a studio can make the plot easy enough to follow game to game, then that helps to get players engaged. As it stands, some of Tekken's plot lines are pretty easy to follow. Generally speaking, the leading star of one game usually takes down their enemy and then goes on to be an even bigger jerk themselves in the next title. Obviously, that's a little facetious and light on detail, but it's definitely a trend and one that kicked right off with Tekken 2. Whilst we're fully aware you can play as Hi Hachi in the original game, where he's positioned as the main antagonist, his role completely changes in the sequel. With Kazuya having taken down his father and wrestled control of the Mishima Zaibatsu Corporation, Tekken 2 framed the journey of Haihachi as that of an anti-hero. He looked to reclaim his seat at the head of the table from his son, who had been corrupted by power. It was a truly interesting left turn for the series to take, showing that fighting games could have some depth in their character interactions beyond the good guy and the bad guy, and has become a trend for the franchise. Number 7, Dr. Neo Cortex, Crash to Insanity. Following the release of Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex, the Crash series was in need of a little bit of livening up to stay relevant. Widening the gameplay style, its sequel to Insanity not only took Crash to some much more open and non-linear stages, but it also paired the famous marsupial with his longtime villain. With Wumpa Island and Dr. Neo Cortex's brain in danger from the appearance of the evil twins, the two team up for the first time in series history. Crash to Insanity is a tour de force of wacky gameplay ideas that never let up. The majority of the game gives the players control of Crash, but Cortex is often present in a variety of different ways, whether that's chucking him around the level to solve platforming puzzles or using him as a snowboard. Of course, there are also parts of the game where you take control of the giant-headed scientist by his lonesome, which offers some unique stages and boss fights that integrate Cortex's blaster rather than Crash's jumps and spins. The Crash Bandicoot series has had plenty of ups and downs over the years, but Twin Sanity manages to boast a genuinely funny script and an enjoyable dynamic where you play as both Crash Bandicoot and Neo. Cortex. Number 6, Calypso, Twisted Metal 4. Twisted Metal was very much a product of its time, after all the phrase vehicular combat feels very 90s. Those who dipped in and out of the series may not know that the games do actually have an ongoing narrative to explore, it's not just mayhem and missiles. 
The fourth game specifically really put together a deeper history of the annual Twisted Metal competition. Designed by the mysterious Calypso, it pits the most deranged drivers against each other in a fight for supremacy. Sweet Tooth, the series mascot, takes his obsession with the tournament to a new level by winning Twisted Metal 3 and ousting Calypso from his seat. Therefore, Twisted Metal 4 became the first and so far only time that the mastermind behind the worldwide violence competition became a playable character. Calypso's stats give him incredibly poor handling to make up for the fact that that he's one of the most powerful characters in the game. The reason why? His vehicle just so happens to be a flatbed truck with a nuke on the back of it. Whilst most of the cast of Twisted Metal are unstable and dangerous in their own right, only Calypso can be described as the longtime series antagonist, so putting him directly into the mix in Twisted Metal 4 was a great idea. Number 5. Revenant Doom Eternal Doom's iconic roster of awesome enemies is something that needs to be celebrated more, and it seems as though id Software thought the same when they made Doom Eternal. In terms of bulking up the multiplayer experience, Eternal includes a unique 2v1 battle mode, which fully kits out one player as the Doom Slayer and then allows them to take on two others playing as demons. The Revenant, which first appeared way back in Doom 2, is just one of the selectable choices here, but he gets an extra bit of love in the campaign. In the third mission, Cultist Base, there's actually a moment where players have to use a Revenant to progress. Progress. Vega, Doomslayer's AI companion, informs the demon-killing badass that the elusive super shotgun is somewhere in the citadel, but out of reach. By taking control of the Revenant drone, players can get their hands on this weapon. This is an example of an idea that didn't even really need to be in the game, but it's cool that it is. The beauty of Doom is swapping through its arsenal of weapons to do damage how you see fit, and being able to temporarily jetpack around as the Revenant was such an awesome unexpected delight. Which of course ends with taking the super shotgun back to Doom Slayer and executing your little helper for their troubles. Number 4. Dr. Eggman – Sonic Adventure 2 Sonic Adventure's main failing is that, with its six playable characters each with their own style, it probably tried too much. Sonic Adventure 2 does its best to focus on just three of these, with Sonic handling your traditional platforming, Knuckles playing a game of hot and cold emerald hunting, and Tails now commanding a mech to offer arcadey combat-focused gameplay. But this is only one half of the playable roster. Mirroring them on the dark side of the story are the new characters Shadow and Rouge, and of course, series mainstay Dr. Eggman. Eggman had been previously playable in the Sonic series, but largely only in spin-off racing games, and Sonic Adventure 2 marks the good Doctor's first and really only playable appearance as part of a main campaign. He gets just as much significance as everyone else, which means we get to enjoy more of the Mad Scientist's personality than ever before. Sonic Adventure 2's story is perhaps the grandest and most rewarding of the franchise. The dark story even ends with the apparent death of Sonic, so that Eggman and company can come out on top. Following this, in the unlockable final mode, we see a new side of Eggman as he is forced to play nice with his anthropomorphic foil to face down a greater evil. Number 3. Elite – Halo 2 in the original Halo, UNSC Marine Super Soldier Master Chief clashed with the Covenant, an appropriately named group composed of different alien races who desired control of the Halo ring, misled by religious promise. The frontline fighters, one of the most challenging races to fight, and certainly the most memorable, were the Elites. Whilst the pre-release hype for the game's sequel revealed that we could play as Elites in the multiplayer, it was a total surprise to find that this was a necessary part of the game's campaign. Felverdam, a disgraced Elite taking on the mantle of legendary but expendable warrior the Arbiter, offered a totally unique story compared to the first game. Halo 2's Arbiter missions let us see through the eyes of the enemy, fighting splinter factions and non-believers using Covenant weapons and active camouflage. Whilst the general concept of the Elites were villainous due to their allegiance with the Covenant, the game offered us greater insight into the situation and by the end of the title saw the aliens swap sides as they learned the truth. This really unique campaign helped us empathise with the complex situation, playing as the warriors we had clashed with in the original title as they began to take back control of their own destinies. Number 2. The Joker – Batman Arkham Knight Intended to be the final game in the Batman Arkham series, 2015's Arkham Knight had plenty of tricks up its sleeves to make it feel like the biggest and boldest entry to date. Whilst the Arkham games are about Batman first and foremost of course, like with most media about the hero, the Joker had been a massive part of the series. The key antagonist for the first two games, even the prequel had specifically explored his rise to significance. After his death, he still had an impact on the Arkham world by clouding Bruce Wayne's vision with hallucinations. In Arkham Knight's final moments, Batman and Joker 
Sly for control of Bruce's mind, and for a moment players take control of Joker inside of Batman's head. In a surprising shift to first person and armed with a gun, we are treated to a truly interesting and poignant take on the codependent relationship of the caped crusader and the clown prince of crime. As Joker, players are hunted by Batman in something more akin to a horror game than anything else. It was a brilliant way to end things with both of these characters and their history throughout the Arkham games, by allowing us to see through the eyes of the villain who had been at the forefront of it all. Number 1. Bowser – Super Mario Odyssey Mario has a weird habit of inviting his nemesises to all kinds of events – football, tennis, golf, and of course karting, so in a way playing as Bowser is somewhat normalised. Even outside of this, King Cooper has playable roles in some of the various Mario RPGs. In terms of the main games though, Bowser only made his playable debut relatively recently in 2017's Super Mario Odyssey. The gimmick for this 3D Mario adventure was the use of Cappy, a sentient hat that could be thrown on others to possess and play as them, from self-aware tanks to, of course, the iconic Goomba. In the most bombastic conclusion to a Mario game ever, the plumber battles Bowser on the inside of the moon. As the cavern begins to collapse, Mario saves himself, Peach, and his enemy the only way he can think of, by taking control of his greatest adversary. Without a doubt, the most fulfilling power trip in the Mario series, smashing through walls to escape the final stage as Bowser feels awesome, and is an appropriate conclusion to the rest of the game. Strange how right it feels for the closing moments of a Mario game to end with us playing as his greatest foe. We just wish we could take Bowser around a tour of New Donk City and live out our Godzilla dreams with him. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, following the rules of pre-established iconic villains, can you think of any other times you've gotten your hands on these characters? Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.